If software engineering and software development jobs are so difficult to fill because of a talent shortage, why then is it so hard to land a new job or even worse, don't get your very first job even though there are plenty of open positions? How can you succeed in this game and make it from the job interview to become the next software engineer or software developer for a certain company? Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to answer that specific question that I just talked about. As someone who has been both an interviewer and interviewee, I decided to go down deep into this topic. Why is it so difficult to get your very first job as a software developer or software engineer? And it doesn't matter if you have gone to school for computer science or alternatively went through a coding bootcamp or maybe you are completely self-taught and know your stuff inside out. So these are all different scenarios, different situations and different issues. But I will give you my full insight in why it is so difficult or seems to be so difficult to land that job as a new software developer or software engineer when there are so many plenty of open positions out there. You see and hear it over and over again from news articles or different blog posts how in demand software development and software engineering is. There are more open job positions than there are qualified workers. Currently, it is expected that the economy adds over 40,000 new software developer or software engineering positions per year all the way until 2030. That is new jobs, not previously existing positions. At the same time, you seem to be hearing from different people in the industry how difficult it is or was for them to land especially their very first job. And it is really hard to understand how both of these statements can be true. It should be demand and supply, isn't it? If demand is higher, why are folks having so many difficulties to land their new job? I really don't get it. So I want to break this down for you to really see what is the reason behind this. But before we get into this though, let's just review the numbers of job growth for software developers. I already talked about them here briefly. Net new, there is an expected addition of 400,000 jobs almost over the next nine years. That is an expected growth of 22% when you consider that there are currently over 1.8 million software development jobs in the United States. In addition, you have people leaving the field, be it for retirement, career changes, or taking non-developer roles, maybe in IT management. So it's Really, I don't know. So why is this disconnect there? So this statistic is really mind blowing because there are very few other jobs that are growing at that rate. I mean, think about it, 22%. So then comes the question again, why is it so hard to get a job as a software developer or software engineer? What has your experience been? Write it in the comments if you don't mind. So one of the main reasons why I think it can be difficult for a software developer or software engineer to land a first job is because the process of coding software itself is so broad and companies are looking basically for a very specific skill set to fill the need. So if you were someone who is, let's say, applying as a front-end developer for those roles, but you only find companies that are looking for back-end developers, well then there is your issue number one, there's a disconnect. Most companies, they will not make a complete 180 and hire someone who doesn't have the right skill set and then train that person to be the one that they're looking for. So they're not going to do that. Do not expect that, please. Of course, there will be exceptions, but this is not always the case and you shouldn't count on it. So typically, these companies will hold out and wait to find that someone who is more in line with what they are looking for. Some companies may be willing to invest in you and train you on their specific technology. So maybe there is some proprietary technology involved and then they are willing to do this. But again, this will be the minority. The other reason I think it can be so hard to land a job as a software developer or software engineer may really be that technical interviews all by itself, they are very different game on their own. And what I mean by that is that the technical interviews are structured in a way that the company, that specific company is hoping to find the best candidate possible. So let's say your interview experience might not be aligned with that. And um, so their style of interviewing is so different. So however, really, there are so many flaws in the technical interviews. And when people are doing technical interviews, even the best of the best can stumble and can get nervous. And even when you are an amazing programmer, you can fail at technical interviews. So don't be surprised this can happen to the best of us. Maybe this gives you some relief, but overall, over the last few years, the technical interview process has gotten a lot better and companies are starting to realize the disconnect that I mentioned, but it definitely still has long ways to go. So you might run into those situations, just be prepared. 
Regardless if you like technical interviews or you don't, the one thing we can all agree on to a certain degree is that the test or the problem you are solving during a technical interview are not what you will be doing in real world scenarios. So it is more for you to show what you're thinking, how your logical skills work to solve a problem, your problem solving skills in general, and also how good your communication skills are related to that specific area. So think about it, problem solving, but also to communicate what are you doing, why are you doing it, and what you expect as a result. And then there are still some companies that are taking this way too literally. And instead of looking at the skills I just mentioned, so communication skills, problem solving skills, and so on, they are way too focused on if you can solve the problem their way. If you can, well, you're in a great position, but if you can't, well, you know the answer. You will not get invited to the next round of interviews. You will not get the job. And rest assured, there are plenty of those companies out there. Another issue I see with technical interviews is really the disconnect between the expectations of what the solution to a problem should look like and how you deliver the solution. So think using a programming language that you feel is better to deliver the solution compared to what they probably want to see the solution to be coded in. Even if it's not the best way to solve the problem, they have their mind set onto that specific solution that they want to see. And if you are doing it in a different way, well, again, your odds of getting the job are significantly lower. And maybe it may not be a big deal until the companies compare the candidates and rather go with someone that coded the solution in their language to their expectations. Another reason why it can be so hard to land your first job as a software developer or software engineer is that the interview process for software developers is really grueling. So there are usually at least three rounds of interviews for a software developer or software engineer. And then of course you get into situations where you are just not making the cut because a lot of these companies prefer to hire people that were coming in as a referral. With knowing that, I can only remind you to build your network of people and to connect with others wherever you can. You can do this on LinkedIn as well. So the referral that I'm talking about is really somebody that knows you and somebody, the same somebody knows somebody on the inside of the company. They will vouch for you. They will make that recommendation. And that's what I'm talking about here. And then of course, there's the well-known situation. You will never hear from the hiring company after a first interview or it takes months for them to let you know that they went with a different candidate. The silence or some people call it being ghosted, it's depressing, it's nerve wracking, your hopes may be high up and then it's just like silence. You will never hear from them again. Maybe you get an automated email message at one point that they went with a different candidate. So it's just part of the game. You need to make it a habit. You might not even always get somebody to freely say it out loud, but ask for feedback from the interviewers. And they may be very lip tight for legal reasons. So companies always have that concern that you sue them for whatever reason. So you have to ask for feedback in a more creative way. Instead of asking, why did you not choose me? You could ask, what can I do better next time? Or what can you recommend for someone in my position to improve my skills and to master an interview somewhere else? See if you can get an understanding of why they went with another candidate by asking that question differently. So this is really a good process to learn and it helps you to build these respectful relationships with the recruiters. So the very first job, that's the very hardest one to get no matter what area of information technology you work in. So it doesn't matter if you're a software developer or in tech support, system administration, the very first job, that's the hard one to get. Use each interview as training and with some additional learning effort on that end, you will land your first job as a software engineer or software developer. And down the road, once you have some experience under your belt, you will see the demand shifting into your favor and you will get a new job as a software developer or software engineer almost instantly whenever you want. So I hope this gives you a good insight into the hiring process and why it is so hard to land a job as a software developer or software engineer. I hope this is valuable to you, but if you have other questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to reply in my comments or make additional videos based on your questions. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in my next video. And of course, hit that subscribe button on your way out or watch one of my other videos. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.